Welcome back to our headless site building journey on Wix. In the previous episodes, we learned how to set up your headless project and start building our site. In this episode, you will build up an efficient and user-friendly online store using the Wix e-commerce solution. We'll cover essential components such as product listings, cart management, checkout process, and payments. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have the knowledge and skills to seamlessly integrate a fully functional e-commerce store into your site, providing a streamlined shopping experience for your users. Before we get to the code, let's take a quick tour of the business manager and set up some products for your store. This is the back office. Here you can handle all aspects of your business, from your store products, order processing, to managing your customer data. If you navigate to store products, then click products, this is where you can add all of the products for your store. For time and for the purpose of this tutorial, I have imported a CSV of products that we're going to use. If you want to use the same products I am, check the description for a link to this CSV. You can upload your products here. If you prefer to add a new product manually, you can click on the new product button and fill in the details like product name, description, price, and all the images for your product. Below the products are where you can manage your inventory. Under inventory, you can update if the product is in stock or not, and you can also choose to track it by quantity if that's important to your business. To launch your store, you will want to set up payments. In the payments section, you can integrate various payment methods. Wix supports a wide range of options from credit cards, PayPal, and more kinds of wallets out of the box. We also offer a service plugin if you have a special, maybe local payment option that you need to integrate. For this demo, we will set up a manual payment method and set the type to cash. In Wix, we recommend you use the Wix Manage Checkout page. This allows you to access all of our out-of-the-box payment options seamlessly with secure and fast checkout but you also have the ability to build your own custom checkout. Now that your store is set up, we can move to the fun part and start building out the front end of your site. For this demo, we will start with an existing sample repo. The link is in the description. You will want to fork this repo and be sure to uncheck copy the master branch only. Once you clone the project, open it in your IDE and check out the static content branch. This will be our starting point. If you haven't already, you will need to set up your environment file with your Wix client ID. You can find this ID in your headless dashboard. If you are setting up your environment for the first time, make sure to duplicate or rename environment.example to environment.local and paste in your value. Now install the dependencies and run yarn dev to take a look at where we're starting. Your store is currently populated with hard-coded static items. We will update the code next to pull from your Wix e-commerce catalog. Back in the IDE, navigate to the store API. It's in app model store. Here you can see the code that renders the static site products and collections. First, install Wix SDK and the Wix stores packages by running these commands. As we covered in the second video about session management, we want to provide a continuous experience to the user, so we need to create a middleware file for this purpose. In this case, you will already have it in your branch, so you just need to uncomment this code. You can revisit the second video in the series if you want to brush up on session management. Next, we will replace the static content with the code to get the products from your store. At the top of the file, add the necessary imports for the Wix SDK, stores, and for session management. Next, we can replace all of these types as you won't need to define them in this way. As we've done in the previous videos, you will create the client here as well. 
Next, scroll down to the Query Products function and replace everything in the body. We will call Query Products from the SDK module to find and return your products. Next, scroll up to the Query Collections function. This function is for querying collections of products, and we will update this in a similar way to remove the body code and replace it with a call to Query Collections. We also have added a filter here that if there is a limit provided, for example, if you only wanted to show three, then the query will apply this limit and the same principle below if you wanted to exclude a particular collection of products. Next, let's add a filter for the collection ID to the query product function. This filter uses EQ, which means that if there is an exact match for the collection ID, a filter by that ID will be applied to the products that are shown. And finally, in Get Product, replace the return to point to the store's products submodule and pass the product ID. Now run Yard Dev so we can see these product and filters in action. Next, you will build out the single product page. In Query Products, in the Store API, we are going to add a condition for slug and for collection ID, which will filter the query by the slug. Slugs are unique values, so you can also add a limit of one to make the request a bit faster. Now let's see the page rendered. Now, when we click on the product, we can see the product page data and slug in the URL. A few more tips. There are two types of product options in Wix. One is color and one is list. These product options are handled the same way in the code except for how you visualize them. For a dropdown type, you can use the string value as is but for a color, you will want to use the value with a CSS color definition. This code is already included in the branch you are working with and is in the product options file. Here you can see how the dropdown options and the button colors are mapped. Now it's time to build out the cart. First, we will need to import a new module for Wix Ecom. The difference between the stores and Ecom modules is that stores is for managing your products and collections and ecom is for handling the cart and checkout. We will add a new constant of Wix stores app ID. This ID is a constant and can be found in the documentation linked in the description. We will use this value later. Next, in your ecom API file, add the ecom module imports, cookies, OAuth, and token imports at the top of your file. Create the client as we have previously. then export types for line item cart and line item quantity. In add to current cart, replace the code in the body with a call to add to current cart, which will take all of the line items to add to the visitor's cart. This function is called when the add to cart button is clicked. We will make a similar update to the body of update current cart and get current cart to also use the ecom module. Get current cart gets the cart that is associated with the visitor's token. This function is called when the cart is rendered. In create checkout from current cart and create checkout, you will need to pass the required parameter of channel type. Here it will be web. For more information on supported channel types, you can check out the documentation linked in the description. Finally, we will continue updating the last few functions here to use the cart and orders submodules from Ecom. The update current cart line item quantity function will update multiple items quantity in the current cart's session. This runs when add or remove quantity in the UI is clicked. 
The last function, remove line items from current cart, clears the current cart session using the remove line items from current cart function. This runs when the clear cart button in the rendered UI is clicked. Now let's add that constant to a few files before we run this code. Navigate to app component product sidebar product sidebar dot tsx. Here you will import the new constant and then use it at the add item function. We will also place this constant in the route for the quick by function, which we will build out shortly. And finally, in cart item, we also need to update the placeholder image to use the image from your product properly formatted so that it will render. Now let's see the cart flow in action. Now let's implement the checkout flow. If you use Wix Manage Pages for processes such as checkout, Wix returns the visitor to your site or app after the process is completed. And for security purposes, you should set the allowed redirect domains. So let's look at that. In your dashboard, go to your OAuth apps settings. Scroll down to the URL section and go to the allowed redirect domain section. Here you can add any allowed domains. If you leave this area blank, it means all domains are allowed. And for the purpose of this demo, we are going to leave this area blank. You do not want to do this for your production site as it is much more secure to set these values. Once you set a redirect domain, make sure that when you are working in dev to also add localhost. With your redirect domains in place, you can now update the code to complete the checkout process. In Model Redirect Redirect API, you will first add imports and create the client. Notice in the imports we are using the redirects module. This will take in the callbacks and checkout ID that are collected when Proceed to Checkout is clicked. When your site visitors are at the Wix checkout page, there could be three possible redirects back to your site. On a successful flow, your site visitor finished the checkout process and is redirected to your thank you page used by navigating to the thank you page URL. They could continue browsing. Maybe your site visitor did not finish through full purchase or the payment process failed used by navigating to post flow URL. Finally, there could be a view cart redirection where your site visitor decided to click on view cart which is used by navigating to the cart page URL. Let's take a look at the cart component so you can see where this code starts. This code's already included in the static branch, but let's review the functionality. When proceed to checkout is clicked, it will use the create checkout from current cart function to create a checkout entity for the products currently in the cart and retrieve a checkout ID. This uses the create redirect session function with the retrieved checkout ID to retrieve an ecom checkout URL. This is the URL for a Wix managed checkout page that the visitor can use to complete their checkout process. And finally, we have one more change to make in the quick buy flow, then we can see it all in action. A quick tip if you have variants enabled is that you will need to set a default value for your quick buy flow. So if the visitor is selecting the option, then this will be passed to your line items like we saw earlier. Now in the quick buy flow, you want to have a default value selected. So this code will set the first value as your default in the quick buy if none is selected. Now let's take a look at the full checkout flow. The last feature we are going to add is a back in stock notification. So in order to let your users know when a product is back in stock, you can subscribe them to a notification using create back in stock notification request API, 
This is a part of the Wix Ecom module we've been using. In your Ecom API, add the back in stock notification module to your imports and the store's app ID from the constants that we set earlier, and the product from the store API. Be sure to reference back in stock in your client as well. Then at the bottom, create a new export called Create Back in Stock Notification Request. This will take the email provided by your visitor and all the information needed about the product to create this request. Then you will need to create a new modal file called backinstockformmodal.tsx. You will place this in Components, Back in Stock Form Modal. At the top of this new file, add all of your imports, including the notification request from the Ecom API that you just created. Then set up the component, taking the product and optionally variants as props. Next, set up your states and context. The used UI hook is for managing the modal display. And then some functions to close the modal and submit the form. Finally, down here, you will render the modal. Next, in your product sidebar, you will add your back in stock modal to your imports and create a new function to notify when available that starts the modal flow. Finally, update the UI to add the button component to notify when available. Now let's see what this flow looks like for your website visitors and from your back office. Now when an item is out of stock, shoppers can choose to get a notification. And in your back office, you will see all of those requests here. To recap, you have now added a fully functional e-commerce solution to your headless site, including product catalog, order management, cart functionality, and a checkout. To learn more about the full range of headless business solutions on Wix, check the description for links to our documentation.